Mr Scully, I mean, we've just basically heard a doctor at the front line saying that, that this basically boils down to wishful thinking. Yes, we'd all like to, to be able to believe that the pandemic's over, but it's not, and we should be carrying on with restrictions for a good while longer. Look, the pandemic... Good morning to you. The pandemic isn't over. COVID hasn't gone away. Uh, what we're t talking about is getting a balance to be able to learn to live with COVID. There is no just end moment here when there's a battle that's, that's been won. And this is the right time to actually start talking about how we move back towards personal responsibility. And I heard both of the... Uh, 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 um, the contributions there and actually it's a balance in between both of those because you can't just dismiss uh, herd immunity as if Omicron and, and the rest of the virus was uh, you know was nothing to worry about but similarly you can't go down this route when um, you're just you say well, like, we want to plan but there's no particular detail because how do you um, wrap people up in cotton wool for the rest of their lives uh, because we, when we don't do that with other transmissible viruses. What the, I suppose, the big question we're all going to be asking ourselves later today, when this press conference happens, this is after the meeting this morning and after the House of Commons statement, when Boris Johnson's there at the lectern, will he be flanked by Messrs Witty and Valance? And if so, do we know what they're going to say about this? I, I don't know. I'm not privy to that. I'm not a health minister, so I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't have seen that. But clearly, SAGE have already said that the uh, pandemic is still with us, that COVID is still with us. And so what, they, what the Cabinet will be talking about this morning is looking at the case numbers, looking at the trends that you've just been talking about, and working through how that um, translates into personal freedoms. Because what we don't want to be doing is ru running the country by government diktat, impinging on people's freedoms, whether it's their well-being, whether it's their health, whether it's their lifestyle, whether it's their business, uh, businesses and jobs. Uh, we want to be able to trust people and their personal, uh, allow personal responsibility. Don't forget, you talk about isolation. Employers still have a statutory duty of care to their employees, whether it's COVID, whether it's flu, whether it's any other illness or, or detriment. Well, if Witty and Valance aren't flanking the Prime Minister, I think we'll all draw our own conclusions about what they think if they're simply not there. But we'll have to wait and see, as you say. Listen, the politics of the personal now. What if you were to get COVID, say, in two weeks' time? Uh, you tested positive, you didn't feel great, but you didn't feel too bad. Would you go to the office? No, if I, um, if I had a transmissible disease like that, just the same way as I have flu, I would stay at home. I wouldn't want to, um, uh, you know, uh, allow other people to, uh, to, to ca catch the disease. But as that I say, that's something feel, that I... Is that how you feel when you are feeling a little bit like if you had mild cold symptoms, for instance? Do you, would, well, do you stay I... at home? I've been employed, uh, self-employed for 25 years. I've run my own businesses, so typically I've, I've worked through a lot of uh, um, uh, my illnesses, but actually what I have always done is be reflective of whether I'm around people or not. That's, you know, I'm 53 years of old. I've had that I've, for... for 50, you know, for, for 51 of those years, I've always taken the personal responsibility. Now, the last two years has been uh, uh, sort of government controlled, and that's why government is saying now is the time to get that balance right. Yeah, but, and sorry, to rely but the question on that Richard asked is, is if you knew that you had COVID, would you go into the office? Uh, no, I think if you've got a transmissible disease, the guidance would be and should be just the same way that pub, um, public health guidance is for any transmissible, transmissible disease is, is not to go into the office, okay. to, to, to be very aware of that. So, but how are you aware that you have the transmissible disease if there's no longer going to be testing? Well, I think this. Um, so employers may choose to, uh, especially in in, in critical um, uh, scenarios, may choose to um, have their own uh, testing uh, regime. But that's up to employers to work through. Employees, as I say, they 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 should know their rights for the statutory duty of care. And I would encourage them to go to the ACAS website where they can see their rights. And if they feel they've got a complaint against an employer who's not giving them the the space that they need in that kind of scenario, hang on, hang to on. Make so a why are you saying? that testing should carry on and that people should test to find out if they have a transmissible disease, which is COVID, and therefore not go to work. Is that the message that you're giving? No, what I'm saying is that no decision has been taken on testing. I think Andrew Bridgen was absolutely right, reflecting on what the Prime Minister said yesterday, that we can't 
go on forevermore spending £2 billion a month on the testing regime. That money could otherwise be spent on other things, not least the um, the, the backlog on, in the NHS that's been developed with other illnesses um, developed because of COVID. Oh, I... um, uh, but, but employers may choose to, uh, to bring in their own testing regime at their own cost. It may be that uh, employees and, and individuals want to test if they're going to see vulnerable uh, family members, for, for example. Um, but that's that no decision has been taken on that, and uh, we'll obviously keep that under review. OK, well, let's just, for, for, for the sake of argument, assume that somebody hasn't got an employer who's willing to, to, to provide testing. The free testing has been, has been abolished. Let's assume that that's, that that's what's going to happen. Are, is what the government's proposing this, that if I wake up one morning uh, with... Maybe it's just a cold, but anyway, I've, I've got a sore throat, I've mm. got a cough, I don't feel too great, which is exactly how I felt when I did have COVID at Christmas time. Are you saying that I should basically, without the test, assume that it might be COVID and stay at home? You know, basically um, hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. Well, I think that's what uh, has been for evermore before the last two years, frankly. With other, you know, if you, if you have those kind of cold-like, flu-like symptoms, then people have made their decisions um, it, you know, since the um, no, uh, beginning people, of the no, Industrial no, no, Revolution. Most people go to work if they've got a cold. They do. I mean, I know some people stay at home in bed, and that's fine. But most people, unless they're feeling absolutely awful, if it's, quote, just a cold, they tend to go to work. They do. Well, uh, no, I, I think what we're saying is we're just trying to, you know, I don't want to speculate and get through every situation. What we're basically saying is that we shouldn't be doing this by government diktat. We should be pushing back to uh, to a, a period of where people can make their own decisions, take their own views, and because it, it will depend on the work setting, it will depend on who's around them, whether they know there are people particularly vulnerable uh, around them. So they will know best what to do, what rather do than government, say... someone sitting in Whitehall okay. dictating what they do. What do you say to those commentators? By the way, sorry, we've just yeah. had two years of people sitting in Whitehall dictating <laughs> exactly. what we should do. Absolutely, which yeah. is why we need to back out. This is why, that's exactly what I'm saying. That's why that... we need to get the balance right and back out of people's right. lives. Okay. Well, well, what do you say to those commentators, and there are many of them this morning, who are saying that this is a political decision? It's not actually to do with the, with, with the medicine, it's to do with the politics. It's a distraction. It's to, it's to get Boris Johnson off the party gate hook. It's to get people who want these restrictions lifted to say thank you, feel grateful and move on. It's actually a, a screen, a bit of a smoke screen. No, because the, the restrictions are all peeling back on the 22nd of March anyway. So we need to be um, uh, looking at these um, uh, measures and we need to be looking at the data in the round. We need to be setting up the plan. Rachel Clark was talking about a plan. We need to be doing that. And that's exactly what the Prime Minister, uh, what the, um, Sajid Javid, the Health Secretary, and what other members of government have been looking at uh, now to, to make those plans, to work through the... Uh, uh, the gears, if you like, towards a, a, a recovery, uh, not just a health recovery and economic recovery, but people's lives and people's freedoms. OK, well, um, we're and that vaccination programme has helped us do that. OK, I mean, I'll ask you the witty valance question at the top of this. I mean, has the government lost faith in these advisers, given that one of them did say at Christmas time, everything we know about Omicron is bad, when in fact it, it wasn't? It was uh, much, much better news than we could have expected. Have you lost no. faith in them? No, not at all, not at all. We've always been guided by the science, but clearly th there's no um, science that's been totally 100% accurate because you're modelling, you're, you're working out what's happening in the future and you can only do that by the evidence that you've, got in the, uh, that you've collated to date and then taking a view on it. So it can't be 100% accurate, but nonetheless, that's why we speak to a range of scientific advisors and, uh, and then collate those views and make a decision, which is a political decision. It's a balance because you, the, the only way that a virus can transmit is if people are close together. So you either okay. lock people away or you just have a, a, the overall freedoms like in that's Sweden or you have something in between. Paul Scully, that's the domestic issue. You just need to ask how concerned we should be about international affairs this morning. I think we have to be incredibly concerned. Um, the Prime Minister has been talking about the fact that uh, Vladimir Putin needs to be retreating back from the border, needs to uh, use the, the diplomatic paths that are uh, becoming available to him, because despite the rhetoric from Russia that military are peeling back, actually there's 7,000 more troops on the border as it stands at the, at the moment. So there's a real credible threat of uh, an invasion in Ukraine, and that will lead to... Uh, great loss of life. It will lead to some really horrendous consequences. So that's why that diplomatic approach must still continue. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for your time. I have to say, Susanna, I don't know about you, but every time I go to bed before a programme these days, I'm half expecting to come in to talk about the war having started. We, it does feel incredibly close, doesn't it?